Hi there, this is Koshik Ranchot from the Ranchot Blog Group. Welcome to our weekly immigration show. Today, you are gonna wanna stay tuned because we're gonna talk about the difference between the I-601 provisional waiver and U visas, which uh, U visa is a great option if nothing else is available. So you'll wanna see what the difference is and what option might be best for you. So if you haven't already smashed the like button, you can also put your comments below if you have a question, but let's jump right to it. What should you apply for? for so, so before we determine what you should apply for, you need to know which one are you eligible for. So let's look at the I-601A provisional waiver. The basic eligibility requirements is that you have to first of all have a qualifying relative. So that would be either you're married to a spouse who is a U.S. citizen or permanent resident, or you have a U.S. citizen or permanent resident parent. And you have to demonstrate extreme hardship to them if they had to go to your home country, you were separated, or if you went to the home country, if you didn't go to the home country, but they went to the home country, you went to the you went to the home country, or if you were separated. So in both of those situations, the other important thing to remember here is that many people ask, well, what about uh, my child? So child is not a qualifying relative, but you can show extreme hardship as well. So that would be indirect hardship to the qualifying relative, but it's not qualifying relative in and of itself where it makes you eligible to apply. So I have a lot of videos on the I-601A waiver, what are the forms of hardship. We're not going to dive into that in this video. We are going to uh, just talk about the differences between the I-601A and the U visa. And then if you decide the I-601A is right for you, then I would go and watch some of those other videos. What about the processing times? Yes. You might be wondering, well, how long is it taking? Well, with COVID, when I'm shooting this video, everything is slowed down significantly. So just for the I-601 waiver itself, depending upon the service center, it's taking anywhere, anywhere from a year and a half to three plus years. So that's for the I-601A, but before that you have the I-130 petition, and I would allow for a year or longer for that. And then after the I-601A is approved, yes, you have U.S. and busy processing time. So I would allow four plus years for that as we speak now. Hopefully that's going to improve. If COVID improves, that it, a lot of it depends upon that situation as well. So I'm hoping to see an improvement, but it is taking a long time right now for these to get adjudicated. Now let's compare that to the U visa. The U visa ain't that much, it ain't much better. Demonstrating my proper English skills here. So what I mean by that is like the U visa is taking five plus years to get approved. So that is a long time, of course. So we've seen those times also just grow, 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 grow. So both of them are taking a long time. Now the difference here is that the U visa, you're going to get a visa at the end of the day once that's approved. With the I-601A waiver, you're going to get a green card. So the U visa, after three years of having a U visa, you will be able to apply for a green card. So you're talking five plus years, three years uh, being in U visa status. So five plus three is eight. So that's eight years before you can even apply for a green card. So the I-601A is still a faster route to getting a green card. With the I-601A waiver, it doesn't have derivative benefits similar to the U visa. So why would you want to apply for a U visa? Well, first of all, let's look at whether or not you qualify. So the U visa is a very interesting visa. In order to qualify for a U visa, you need to be a victim of a qualifying crime. Not only that, but you also need to have suffered substantial mental or physical abuse from that crime. Now, a question that I get very often is, well, I had this crime occur in my home country. Well, no, it doesn't qualify. It needs to be the crime that occurred in the United States. The first step in that process is getting a certification either from the police department, either a United States federal, state, 
or local government agency that's investigating or prosecuting the crime. What about the processing times? Touched about it earlier. There's two steps in the UV, the process. First step is uh, getting the certification. So in California, that's taking about 90 days. After that, that's when you can go to the second step of applying with USCIS. Now with the U visa, uh, you can also apply for work authorization. Another benefit of the U visa is that you can also apply for derivative benefits. So deriv what's a derivative? It's a family member, so you can apply for your spouse, you can apply for your child. Your child needs to be under the age of 21 if you're going to apply for them. Okay, what are some of the differences between the I-601A and the U visa? So for the I-601A, you have to show extreme hardship to your qualifying relative, which we talked about earlier. So that can be done on a variety of grounds. That can be done by demonstrating that there's financial hardship, career hardship, health hardship, and we like to go through all of the different types of hardship with you to evaluate whether or not you have a case for hardship or not. Whereas in the U visa, you need to qualify by ensuring that you really qualify based on one of the enumerated crimes. Now, another very important factor, and this is extremely important to note, is that the provisional waiver forgives unlawful presence. Now, if you have more than one unlawful entry, depending upon the facts of your situation, but in uh, many cases that we see, you won't be eligible if you have more than one unlawful entry for an I-601A waiver, but it is fact specific. So I invite you to connect with us if you have questions about that. But the U visa may be a better option in that regard because it forgives multiple unlawful entries and it may even forgive certain types of criminal acts where the I-601A would not. That is where the U visa really is a catch-all and a, a way to a, apply for a lawful status where the I-601A or other waivers fall short. I hope this video has served you. I wanna thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to watch this video to better yourself. You're amazing for doing that because you're bettering yourself, bettering your family by educating yourself and if you want to ask a question, post it in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Make sure you subscribe so you can continue to get these videos. And I'll talk to you next week. Bye for now.